today. The snake that bit me actually broke the world record for the biggest venom you would ever produce by a venomous snake. You promised me this wouldn't happen. I couldn't even breathe. I thought I was gonna die. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is a big day for me, all right? I'm going to be answering literally the biggest and most asked question I've had from you guys over the past six months with Venom Diaries. I've got a couple of special guests coming in for it. I can't wait to tell you all about it. It's probably gonna be a little bit emotional. To start off with, my favorite snake. He's a unit, this fella. You guys have been asking me a big question from day one, and that is, have I ever been bitten by a venomous snake? And I've downplayed this question a lot because it's not something I love to talk about, but this is the story of how I was bitten by a king brown snake uh, at the end of 2016. Now, what happened was it was just a normal day at the park. Um, I was actually treating this snake, so I wasn't even milking him, okay? So he had something wrong with his right eye that the vet had actually um, done a little surgery on and cleaned it up. And what I had to do every day, I had to come in and give the snake, like I literally had to use a cotton wool bud just like this, and I had to put an ointment across his eye, right? Because the vet removed the eye scale. Um, so until he did another shed, he had no eye scale. So I had to put this onto his eye, didn't dry out. And I had to give him an injection. And what happened was I had a fella helping me um, who was holding the body like this, and I was still in the ointment, everything was fine. And then I asked him to go and grab the injection. I was, I'll just hold the snake by myself like this, like I do a lot of the time, but I shouldn't have done that, all right? The snake was just too big and too powerful. So I'm doing this, blah, 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 blah. Everything's good. And then he just thrashes out of control and I look down and he's just chewing on my left wrist there. And I mean chewing. My instinct was I just grabbed him by the, the neck and I ripped him straight off the side of my wrist. I put the snake away. Um, like this, so he went back into his enclosure. He'd obviously let him go of me by that stage. So I grabbed a bandage, boom, boom, boom. The fella I was working with radioed um, the managers and they come flying up. They were in the building within about literally under a minute. Hayley grabbed wheelchair and she pulled it up. You guys have probably seen the wheelchairs in the background in the video sometimes, but this is literally why we have a wheelchair. It's so to limit movement, because your venom is triggered by muscle movement with the lymphatic system. So we go straight into a wheelchair like this and the anti-venom kit sits on my lap and they, I don't have to push it like this, but they just push me straight to the car and um, we, we practice this a lot, this, this as a drill. And you know, it's something since that day has played in my head a lot. You know, it's not something I'd ever, I never want to relive. And you would have seen last uh, an episode recently where I almost got bitten by a king brown again. So that was <laughs> not a good feeling. But um, we got in the car. It was Tim and myself. And within about five minutes, I could feel symptoms. My eyesight was strange. I had a really weird taste in my mouth. I felt extremely nauseous. I was sweating so bad. And then we arrived at the hospital. They chucked me up on the bed and they started covering me in monitors and all sorts of wires and whatnot. They tapped into this vein straight away because like, this arm was bandaged, so went straight in there. When they got the antivenom ready and when they started giving me this antivenom, that's when we found out very quickly that I am hyper allergic to antivenom. Alrighty, so I've got my wife here, Siobhan, YouTube, YouTube, Siobhan. Hello. <laughs> and we're gonna milk a big King Brown. And um, this is obviously the species that bit me. Um, oh, look at that yield. So that's literally what I wore in a bite. So Siobhan was working at another park at the time up in the Hunter Valley. And you received, your boss received the phone call, didn't you? Yeah. So what, what, what so, happened there? So Tim um, called my boss, Jason, at the time. Um, and I was called in to the office and Jason said to me quite casually, oh, Bill's been bitten. And I thought, okay, what has he been bitten by? And he goes, oh, a King Brown. So I get to Gosford Hospital and Tim is waiting in the car park for me. So instantly there was alarm bells going. I was in a very, very bad way. 
So we, we cruised into the recess ward and I actually walked straight past Bill. You were completely swollen. I just couldn't tell it was you. It, it was crazy because I was having the effects of like literally more venom than that because the snake was three times the size of this. Um, like the snake that bit me actually broke the world record for the biggest venom you would ever produce by a venomous snake. So that was in my brain the whole time. I was freaking out. Like I, I, I honestly thought I was going to die. But so I was dealing with the effects of the venom, but also dealing with the effects of being allergic to anti-venom. I was all swollen. I was just like covered in these huge red hives. I thought I was going to die. In my brain at that time, I was like, I just want Siobhan to get here, just, you know, because I, I, I just like, I just want to say goodbye to her. It was, yeah, it was, it was a bad day. And, um, I had a ring for Siobhan to propose, and like, which was so close to doing. And um, I was just like, so, I was like, I'm not even going to get to propose to her. And I had it all planned what I was going to do in the croc yard and um, obviously I survived and we're, <laughs> we're here now. But that was what was running through my brain. So it was, just, yeah, it was a scary state of my life, like hands down. Yeah, it was, um, I knew it was bad without knowing it was bad. Um, and then I didn't know. I didn't get told that he was allergic to the anti-venom until afterwards. Um, I didn't know that he went into anaphylaxis. So when, <laughs> trying to lighten the mood now, like I did then, um, I rock up and everyone was really emotional. Bill was really scared, his family was really scared. And um, so I went and bought a block of chocolate and sat on the bed and had a chat with Bill and his parents. And it wasn't until about an hour into me being there, they went, do you know how bad things were? And I went, no, I didn't realize that. He was allergic to the anti-venom, he had anaphylaxis. I couldn't even breathe. I was oblivious to how bad things were. Mm. Yeah, and it's obviously kind of affected us for a long time, even. I had a really close call with King Brown last week and it, it brought back a lot of bad memories for me. Like I had, honestly, I had PTSD after that bite and I, I didn't deal with it at the time. I sort of just, you know, put it under the carpet and cruise and it sort of hit me a couple of years later down the track, I guess. Um, that happened. Three weeks later, my best mate died in a helicopter crash. And so I just had this like, I got bitten by a snake, almost died, proposed to Siobhan, everything was mad. And then my best mate died in a helicopter crash. So like the end of 2016 was just horrible for me. It was great, but it was horrible at the same time. Thank you for coming in. I know, <laughs> I know reliving that's not nice. No. <laughs> but um, Siobhan has been my like literally rock. For almost 13 years um, and she helped me live through a that it was terrible and it went on for a long time so thank you it's how okay. was it for you coming in today um i guess like it's brought up a lot of emotion and a lot of <laughs> memories that we we try to block out um but i think it's just important you know he what you do is really important and you love what you do when you're very very good at it um and it's just something it's as couples we just have to work together to support each other and you know keep just it is it is such a good reminder for us like yeah. what it felt like going back and having that happen because we don't want to ever experience that again and just working together just to keep each other supported and safe <laughs> and emotionally okay <laughs> Siobhan rides horses and I reckon they're worse than snakes so <laughs> um but you know Siobhan's never told me no with anything and I you know when we after the bite I took a bit of time off handling about six months um, I was working with crocodiles more so, and I, I don't know what's worse, to be Crocs honest. Crocs are worse. <laughs> Crocs are worse. But you can't get any venom from them. <laughs> she's never told me no. Like, she's been the, the, the biggest supporter. Um, so, thank you, and I love you so thank much. You. And thank you for coming in. <laughs> All right. All righty. So, I've actually convinced mum to come in. This is like her nightmare in here. She's been very nervous about the whole snake thing. So everyone on YouTube, this is my beautiful mother, Hi. Susan. Hi. Mum, YouTube. Hi. And mum is pretty nervous right now, aren't she? She is. <laughs> <laughs> so mum came into the hospital the day I was bitten. So Tim, our park director, actually called mum's phone, but my older sister Kellyanne answered. Kel came out and she goes, mum, you might want to get that coffee to go. And I said, oh, aren't we doing lunch? And she said, 
Bill's been hit by a snake and you're probably best to mosey on in. And I said, okay, that's fine. I didn't panic. I thought, oh, he just takes his anti-venom and that he'll be fixed as soon as he gets seen. By the time I get there, it'll be pretty much over. Got my coffee, drove in and I said, oh, Tim, it's Bill's mum. Tim was clearly shaken. He was clearly traumatised. And he said, oh, I just need you to sit down. I said, oh no, if you can just take me into Bill. And he said, no, can we just sit down? And there was a couple of seats there and we sat down and I said, what's wrong? Bill's not great. And I said, what do you mean Bill's not great? He said, he really isn't great. He said, he's extremely unwell. And I said, Tim, please take me in. And I went in and I seen Billy and I seen his face. He actually didn't look like Bill. His face was quite round and he's laying on the table. There's lights in my face. They've got a recess, like a defibrillator, right there, ready to go. I was getting jabbed left, right and centre. They were trying to reverse the symptoms of the antivenom. So they couldn't even give me the antivenom. So I was wearing this venom from the King Brown, which was absolutely cooking me. The effect of the antivenom, the anaphylaxis. So then they just had to completely stop the antivenom to get on top of what was going on. And it took some time. And I clearly remember saying to him, you promised me you promised me this wouldn't happen. And he was laying there and his face was this big and the tears were just rolling down his face. And I just thought, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want it to end this way. Mum was, she was really, she wasn't like angry at me or anything. She was just so nervous that something like this was gonna happen. Um, and it took 10 years. It took 10 years for, for me to make a mistake and have that happen. It doesn't affect just me, it affects everyone that around me, my family and, and all my loved ones. So it was horrible, but It was, yeah. like it was horrible. It yeah. was real. It was happening. Yeah. The emergency nurse that was looking after me, the doctors, is one of my younger sister's best mates. So she was there and she was sort of trying to defuse the situation and calm everyone down. And she was fabulous. Yeah, you know, this is really hyper allergic to antivenom. It's going to be OK, but it's going to look really bad for a while. My dad, he was a paramedic for a long time and he was just like calm as a cucumber. He was like, no, no, don't worry, this is happening. He's explaining to everyone what's going on inside of me and blah, 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 and the am going on with the doctors and don't worry, it's gonna be fine, Susan. And But yeah, mum and my sisters and eventually Siobhan were an absolute hot mess, but, um, and so was I. So the first thing I did that day when I was bitten was I put the snake down, I put it straight back in the enclosure and then I grabbed my pressure bandage and I literally, I got bitten right there. So it, it grabbed hold of me right here and was chewing. And because you would have noticed the King Browns on the venom vials, they just grab hold and they just, it was just doing this. So I grabbed him by the head and I literally ripped him off the side of my hand there and I put him in the enclosure, closed it, grabbed a bandage. I have bandages literally placed all around the buildings where I have venomous snakes. So with these, you go over the spot three times, like so, so that's exactly what I did, but I was like pretty nervous and there was a lot of blood. Uh, and then I just did one wrap below like this and then I went straight up like so and I got it on nice and tight. I reckon my bandage was on within about like under a minute. Just explain to me why this is so important. So and do I have to have one of these? You have to have one. I've given them to you. I'm, I hope they're at, at home or in your they car. Are. Yeah. Um, so these are a pressure guide, right? So they start as a rectangle. When you pull to the correct tension, you get squares or close enough. Because venom is actually traveling through your lymphatic system, which is the fluid just below the surface of your skin. And you scratch yourself and you get that clear fluid comes out. That's what it's traveling through initially before it gets to your lymph nodes up here. And what this does is it slows the movement down dramatically. It'll travel about 10 centimeters a, 10 centimeters a minute if you don't put a pressure bandage on. So that's why we get them on so fast. Um, you know, they can buy you hours of time. What if you didn't have that? You gotta make one. You rip up your clothes. Okay. Yeah. That's the most important thing to do. This is the first thing you need to do before you think about ringing someone, do any of that. It's just get a bandage on or make one and get it on there. You can remove your jewelry as well. Like you wear rings, you'd get them off because there's a good chance, especially from a black snake, you're gonna swell up. Then they'll get really, really sore after like an hour or so. It, it is really uncomfortable having a bandage on, but you know, they can literally save your life. So you just got to, you got to deal with it. Alrighty, what an emotional roller coaster that was. 
reliving um, that bite. That's literally how I felt today, reliving it. Um, got the waterworks flowing. <laughs> um, and, you know, I can't thank Siobhan and my mum enough for coming in today. A lot of people ask me that know about my bite, why I still do this, but and it's, it's not a hero thing at all, but it, it just, like, it saves so many lives each, each year in Australia, and I'm extremely proud of that. And, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll do this as long as I can. Literally, you know, I'm 39 years old now, and I, I still think I've got plenty of good years in me to keep doing venomous snakes and venom extraction, I, and I, I just love it, you know. But it, it definitely plays in the back of my mind a lot, you know, the bite. I, I never, ever want to relive that again. Anyway, I hope you guys understand this a little bit more now, why I do what I do, um, and obviously why I wasn't so keen on jumping on answering that question, because it's something that I really beat myself up over it for a long time, and it's not something I talk about. Some of my absolute best mates don't even know what I went through there. So hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, you know, it was a big one, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, you know the drill, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you for the next episode.